Okay, so that's the that's that's part A of the of this problem, the sample two problem. Uh, we have two more parts to it. So I'm gonna so that's the that's the final answer there. I'm gonna erase this. And the second part of this problem. All right. And what am I looking for in the second part? Let's remind ourselves. Second part says, um, find the acceleration if B is moving up the incline. All right, so let's rewrite it just to, for kicks here. Find the acceleration if B is moving up the incline. All right, so now I'm in a kinetic friction case. Now we're talking about moving up the incline. So now I'm in a situation where we're looking at kinetic friction. Now, now we're assuming that we are now sliding. This block is now sliding. Okay, and so again, you're going to want to do two cases. Now you're going to look at the case where now the block is sliding. In this particular case, the it's going to be kinetic friction and the question is well we're saying that the block is sliding up the incline remember friction always opposes motion or the tendency of motion if the block is moving up the incline that means the friction's got to be opposing it or going down the incline so your friction in this case would be negative down the incline. Why? Because the block is moving up the incline. All right. So it's very important. I mean, your friction changes personality depending upon depending upon what kind of what's the what's the situation in the problem. So now we're going up the incline. So it means that you have to change things. So if so, let's kind of think about this here for a moment. If we're talking about um, motion going up the incline, that means that we have positive x motion. In that case. If the block is going along uh, up the incline, that means that at the same time, A is going down. Okay, so I'm just going to assume that maybe the acceleration is actually uh, going, going down. If I'm wrong, that means the acceleration is negative again. Or, well, actually, I think that I think that the block, the, the, I think the system is actually going to slow down. I'm going to make the assumption here that the acceleration is actually, well, we'll make the we'll make the assumption acceleration is actually going to go uh, is actually going to go down the um, the um, incline. I'm uh, sorry, yeah, excel, sorry. The acceleration is going to go up the incline. And if I'm wrong, then I'll just have a negative answer. I'm, I always like to try to assume that the acceleration is along the initial motion. That just keeps things simple, right? All right, so I'm going to again do. Uh, free body analysis, free body diagram. So I'm going to focus on B first. And again, I'm just going to just draw draw a picture, but only care about B. And I'm just drawing the. I really don't have to draw the incline plane. I'm just drawing the incline plane for for reference, essentially, or for um, for a perspective or um, or context, I guess. So we'll say this is theta. Now, again, you know, kind of get practice at this. Here is block B. Now, the tension is again going to be going up. Again, this is what I'm calling positive X. Now, in this particular case, I'm assuming that the block is, is moving up the incline. In that case, then, that means the frictional force is directed down the incline. And, in fact, it is a kinetic friction f sub k because the block is moving it's already moving so you're in the kinetic realm and the only other forces in this problem again given i have these tilted axes i have the y-axis here the normal force is along y and gravity is still straight down and again the components 
you know, the gravity is m sub b times g. And the components, the component along the x direction, again, will be m sub b, m sub b g sine of theta, the component along the y direction, m sub b g cosine theta, okay? Again, deja vu, we've seen this before. Newton's second law, sum of all forces in the x direction. <clears throat> Again, it's T is up. F sub K is down the incline, negative. Uh, Mg sine of theta again is always is directed down. Gravity is down. It's going to be it's going to be uh, basically it's going to have a, a, a negative y and a negative x. It's a it's really a third quadrant vector in this in this regime. Be kind of tilting. It'll be a third quadrant. So minus m sub b g uh, sine of theta, and that's equal to now. I am going to make the assumption that the acceleration is along the positive. I'm making that assumption now. I'll probably be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's down the incline, but we're going to make the assumption that it is positive. M sub B A. I'm making the assumption that it's positive. I'm making the assumption the acceleration. So we're assuming acceleration is along positive X. If I'm wrong, that just means that the acceleration will be the opposite of what I thought, and instead it'll be down the negative x. That's all. It's no big deal. I'll still get the right answer. All right. And so there's my x equation. My y equation, as usual, is no different, right? Same old, same old math, inclined plane. I'll just write it down m sub b g cosine theta. Again, the y equation, I've done it uh, many times. It is the normal force m sub g cosine theta, and that's the that is normal force for the um, for the inclined plane. Now again, um, f sub k is always going to be mu sub k times the normal, or mu sub k. What is the normal? Oh, it's m sub b g cosine of theta. Again, there is no maxing out to a maximum uh, static, you know, maximum friction. I mean, no matter what, if the block is sliding, that is the frictional force. Mu sub k, m, m sub b, g, cosine theta. Again, if I put everything together, I'm going to essentially put this formula right here. Okay, into that form. I'm going to combine all the equations. I'm going to rewrite this equation. Just going to combine everything. And so the equation I now have for B is T minus mu sub K, M sub B, G, cosine of theta, minus M sub B, G, sine of theta is M sub b a okay that's what i have now and again what i'm going to actually see is that i'm going to end up having two equations two unknowns so let's just do it now right that let's just solve this first equation for the tension and this is the tension in the, in the in the cable and if i do that i will find out that it's mu sub k i'm going to throw everything on the other side Okay, and so it's going to be um, mu sub k m sub b g on the other side becomes positive cosine theta throwing this on the other side plus <clears throat> m sub b g sine of theta and this m sub b a is already on the other side of the equation so plus m sub b a there you go that's the equation i get for the block b 
So let's just kind of put this in a storage. That's my B analysis. So I'll put that in storage here. I'm going to just rewrite it in the top because I have this uh, issue with my real estate here. So here's my B equation. And that is just the tension is equal to mu sub K, M sub B, G, cosine of theta, plus M sub B, G, sine of theta plus M sub B, A. All right, that's what we have. Okay, so that is for block B and again, block A. We assumed up, acceleration up the incline for block B, which means we'd have to assume an acceleration that's down for block A. So again, block A, looking at its free body diagram, again, tension still always up, weight is always down. In this case, I'm assuming that if I'm assuming that that the acceleration is up the incline for block uh, B, then I have to make the same assumption to say move in tandem that the acceleration would be down the I'm sorry would be actually be straight down for block A. So I'd write down and there's only a y equation, so I'd write down the summation of all forces in the y direction in Newton's second law again, tension up minus m sub a times g down, and I'm making the assumption that, oops, the acceleration, the, we call this the inertial force on the right-hand side is down. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, that's fine, all right? And I'll, I'll, I'll then set this um, equal to the tension, again, looking ahead. And so for a, the a equation is simply is, is that the tension, solving for the tension, Throw this guy over. I have M sub A G minus M sub A A. That's all I have. All right. So, so again, we have two equations and two unknowns. And our unknowns are again T and A. And I want to eliminate one variable and solve for the other unknown. So I want to eliminate T. One way of doing it is setting everything equal to T and then solving for A. Again, just like last time. So T equals all the stuff mu sub k m sub b g cosine of theta plus m sub b g sine of theta plus m sub b a equals this stuff m sub a g minus m sub a a so again, I, I have eliminated T. That's my equation. Okay? Now, with that said, um, I'm going to put all my A's on one side. So I have M sub A, A plus, I'm going to throw the M, I threw the M sub A, A on the other hand. M sub B, A is already on the other side. So equals the M, let me write this uh, further to the left, I guess. All right, so M sub A, A, throw that on the other side. M sub A, A plus M sub B, A. Okay, and that's equal to, um, let's see, I'm going to throw everything else to the right. So I'm going to throw the this term and this term to the right, make it, and that would make them actually both negative. So that'll be minus this term, mu sub K, M sub B G cosine theta minus M sub B G sine theta. And this and uh, this term is already on the right, so I'll be plus M sub A G. All right, so again, deja vu. What I'm going to do now is all I'm going to do is factor out the A's and then divide by, factor out A and divide by, so well, let's just do one step at a time. So I have... M sub A, A, oh, I'm sorry. M sub A plus M sub B, I'm just factoring out A on the left-hand side, all multiplied by A. And on the right-hand side, I'm just going to factor out the thing that's in common, that's G. So G times bracket, 
And that's going to be um, m sub a minus mu sub k, m sub b cosine theta minus m sub b sine of theta. All right, and all that is left to do is to divide both sides by, by the sum m sub a plus m sub g. And, and sorry, m sub b, and that, I'll have an answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, essentially erase all of this stuff. I don't need it anymore. I now have the equation that I want. So I'm going to erase everything else and write the final equation for what I want. So I already have, the, the, you know, I don't need these uh, initial equations anymore. So my final answer will be A. And again, all I'm going to do is divide by m sub a plus m to g. So it's going to equal A equals g. Let me write it a little bit further to the left. M sub A, so A equals G times brackets. M sub A minus mu sub K, M sub B e cosine of theta minus M sub B e sine of theta. All right, and then that's all divided by m sub a plus m sub e. So now I'm ready to plug in numbers. A is going to be 9. I'm going to write this a little bit more to the left. I need all the real estate I can get. <laughs> a is 9.80 meters per second squared times bracket. All right, so again, I, I already did the work before. I have 14.5 kilograms minus. Again, now we're talking about we're talking about kinetic friction. So I want to use that kinetic friction coefficient. Okay, so that last time I so this time I have to use the 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is actually my kinetic friction coefficient. You know, to look back at the earlier part of this video here. So 0 0.25. That's the kinetic friction coefficient because it's now kinetic. Uh, now M sub B is 45.4 kilograms times the cosine of 45 degrees. Oops, not yet. Hey, oh, that's, that's not pretty. Cosine. All right, one more term. Um, minus this term, M sub B, e, again, 45.4 kilograms times the sine of 45 degrees. All right, all divided by the whole mass, M sub A plus M sub B, e, 14.5 kilograms plus 45.4 kilograms. All right, so if I work all that stuff out, I find out that I get um, an A. And that's going to be negative 4.19 meters per second squared. And again, I, I want to return the problem as I got it. I got it in English units. So I got to return it back to English units. So I'm going to have to make a conversion. And again, um, there are 3.281 feet in a meter. Good thing to know. Finally, I get that A is negative 13.7 uh, feet per second squared. Or 13.7 feet per second squared. Now let's think about this for a moment. I initially assumed that B was going up the incline. Remember in my analysis, well, this negative sign says that I'm wrong. It means I got that wrong and that really B is actually down the incline. So given that I got this negative, my assumption of up the incline was actually wrong. It's actually down the incline. That's okay. I mean, again, I still get the right answer. I just have to understand what that negative sign means. Okay, that is, um, part B of the question.
And there's one more part to the question. So let's uh, do that real quick. We're almost done. All right, this, um, again, I'll... <coughs> it's a lot to Newton's laws and forces, and so this is not something you can just do in a few minutes. All right, the last part is basically saying, you know, essentially what happens if if the uh, if you're going uh, down the incline. So now, what's acceleration B is moving down the incline. That's part C. Last one was up the incline. What is the acceleration if B is moving down the incline? So again, I like this problem because it has friction, has tension, has gravity, pretty much has everything in it. And you know, it's it's you know it's involved and it makes you think. It makes you think about where you want the friction to be pointed. So this problem makes you really think now. <clears throat> so all right, so what now? Well, I'm gonna make an assumption. Again, okay, so this this block is moving down the incline. So that means that if it's moving down the incline, it's moving, it's it's the friction is always has to oppose. The motion or the tendency of the motion. That means that the friction has got to be going up the incline. So the frictional force now has to change personality and it's going to move up the incline now because it has to oppose the motion and it's going to be kinetic friction. All right. So now I'm going to make the assumption that the acceleration is now down the incline. I always like to make the assumption that the acceleration is going with the initial, where the initial velocity is. I mean, it's a personal choice, but so anyway, I'm going to make the assumption that acceleration A this time is down the incline. If I'm right, then my answer is going to be positive. And I have to do this because I have to coordinate these two blocks. I wouldn't really care so much if I just only had one block in the problem. I got to coordinate the motion of both of them. They will they both have to be moving in tandem. All right, so here we go. One more, and it's gonna be a, a lot of deja vu. It's just that you gotta be thinking very carefully about where things what's you know what's happening. You have to be very careful about how you're assuming where friction is going. So again, I'm gonna do a free body analysis. I'm gonna consider each block independently. All right, and so doing that, I, I'm going to look at block B. Just consider block B, nothing else, right? And so what that means is that I, and again, I don't have to really draw the the incline, but I'm just going to do it for purpose of uh, context. Again, again, I have deja vu. I have block B. Now, what's going on? Well, I'm going to use my, my tilted coordinates. There's my positive x-axis. And then here's my positive y-axis. The normal force is going along positive y in this new system. Tension is going up the x-axis. And so is friction. Kinetic friction. And again, the other only other force is that weight is straight down. Again, that'll be M sub B G. And here are my new coordinates. And so again, this would be M sub B G sine of theta. This would be M sub B G cosine of theta. Alrighty. So Again, applying Newton's second law. Sum of all forces in the x direction. All right. So what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be tension going along the positive x. All right. One second. Put my notes. Tension going along positive x. The kinetic friction is going to be going along positive x. It's also positive. And again, the weight component will be opposing. Down, be down the incline, m sub e g sine of theta. 
And again, I made the assumption that the block is going, is accelerating down the incline. So I'm going to hold on to that assumption. And if I'm wrong, then I'll have a negative answer to say, oh, no, actually, it's up, it's up the incline. So negative M sub A, oh, sorry, negative M sub B A. All right, so that's what that says. So again, I'm making the assumption. Now, right, A is just a, it's just a magnitude at this point when I'm making this assumption. So I'm making the assumption that the A is going down, it has an acceleration down the incline. All right, and so, and again, sum of all forces in the y direction, blah, blah, blah. What I would get from that second equation is again, m sub e g cosine theta. Again, it'd be the exact same math that I did originally. That would be the Newton's second law in the y direction. I'd get this as an answer, okay? I'm not gonna do it again, I'm just gonna write it down, all right? And again, just like last time, the frictional kinetic frictional force is always going to be mu sub k times the normal. And that, that's my normal. So it's going to be mu sub k m sub b g cosine of theta. Plug it all together. If I put this over here, and you've seen it before, I'm going to take all this information from the y, y equation and, and, the, and the expression, empirical expression for the, for the friction. I'm going to stick all of that where that F sub K is in the X direction equation. And putting it all together, I can now write this equation right here as, as T plus mu sub K M sub B G cosine of theta minus M sub B G sine of theta equals negative M sub B a. And as usual, what am I going to want to do? Well, I'm going to actually want to solve for the tension force yet again. So the tension. And again, why do I want to do that? Because I'm going to eliminate it. Again, it's going to be two variables, two equations, two unknowns. So I'm going to throw everything on the other side. And so this becomes positive. M sub B G sine of theta. And, the, and this one becomes negative. And this one's already negative. So minus mu sub K m sub b g cosine of theta minus m sub b a. All right. And so that is the equation I get for the block b where the ten, where the where the acceleration is going down the or sorry, uh, where the motion is going down the incline. I'm going to go and just save it. So this is my block b equation. Again, I'm going to do just like I did the last two sections. I'm going to save this away store it away, look at block A, and then, and then you know, combine the equations and so on and so forth. You've seen it before. All right, so here's block, here's the block B equation. Just rewrite it. I'm just going to copy T, and we, again, real estate is my friend. T equals, all right, M sub B G sine of theta. All right, minus mu sub k m sub b g cosine of theta minus m sub b a. All right, so there you there you go. And that's the block b equation. And now I have the block a equation. So again, I got to do a free body diagram for block a. And so block a is pretty simple. There's only motion in the y direction. So tension is up, the same tension, again, the same tension on both sides of the pulley because the pulley is massless and frictionless. And of course, block A has a weight, M sub A G. And what am I assuming now? I'm assuming that the acceleration of block B was down the incline. Well, block B is accelerating down the incline, that means the block A must be accelerating up. So again, block A accelerating up, that means that the summation of all forces in the y direction will be the tension up minus m sub a g, it's weight down, and that's m sub a a, positive assuming that we're going up. I'll, I'll set this equation equal to tension, and now I have a block a equation. And I'm just going to set this equal to, and then I have a second equation <coughs> for block a. 
and that's simply a T. Throwing this on the other side, I got M sub A G plus M sub A A. All right. So two equations and two unknowns. Again, what do I do? I have to, I mean, I'll, I'll set, I mean, I want to eliminate one. I want to eliminate the T and solve for the A. So essentially, I'm going to set both equations equal to T and eliminate T. So again, you've seen this before. T equals, I'm going to re rewrite this, M sub E, G, sine of theta, minus mu sub K, M sub E, G, cosine of theta, minus M sub E, A, equals another expression for T. M sub A, G, plus M sub A, A. Okay, so what I would, I've now done is I've now eliminated T. There it is. Now, deja vu, I now want to solve for A. That's all that's left. So throw everything that's A on the other side of the equation. And so what, what am I going to get? Um, I'll get negative M sub A, A. And I'm going to throw this on the left side of the equation. This becomes negative. This is already negative on the other side. So negative M sub B, A equals, and now I want to throw what's, we know what's not dependent on the acceleration on the other side. So this becomes negative, this becomes positive, all right? And so what I have here is um, negative, uh, let's see here, negative M sub B G sine of theta, that be and this becomes positive, plus mu sub k, m sub b, g, cosine theta, and put the other side, and this is already on the side, m plus m sub a, g. All right, so there you go. That So then what I now need to do is multiply through by a, a negative sign and factor out the a. That's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to multiply through by negative 1, and factor out A and factor out G on the other side. Do two steps of one. So factor out A. Again, I've already multiplied through by a negative one. So what I'm left with is M sub A plus M sub G. Sorry, M sub B, what I keep saying. All right. On the other side, I've again I've I'm gonna pull out the G and, and I and I multiply through by negative one. So G gets pulled out. And what's left now is this this is positive, this is negative, and this is negative now. And so what I'm now what I now have is um, uh, M sub B sine of theta. It's now positive because I'm multiplied through by negative one, and the other two guys are negative, minus mu sub k m sub b cosine theta and this is now negative minus m sub a all right so i did this all i did is i multiplied through a negative one i pull a factor out a on the left side a factor out g on the right side that's all i did only thing left is to divide divide through both sides by m sub a plus m sub b so again this is the only equation i care about now I'm going to erase everything else. All right. Let's see here. So final equation. A is equal to G. Yeah, I mean, write it a little bit more. I, I just, real estate is the thing here. So A equals G. Times bracket, M sub B, sine of theta, minus mu sub K, M sub B, cosine of theta, minus M sub A, all divided by M sub A plus M sub B. And a lot similar looking to the other two parts. Now all that's left to do is to actually uh, plug in values. So here we go. A 
is 9.80 meters per second squared, acceleration of gravity, times brackets. M sub B e is 45.4 kilograms. All right, times the sine of 45 degrees. All right, minus 0 0.25, I believe it's a coefficient of uh, friction, yes, times 45.4 kilograms times the cosine of 45 degrees and minus M sub A is 14.5 kilograms. All right. All of this will be divided by the sum of the masses. So 14.5 kilograms plus 45.4 kilograms. And I do it all together. I find out that A is a positive 1.57 meters per second squared. That means I guessed right. I said the plus means that I said that I expected the motion when the, you know, when the um, blocks were initially sliding down the incline. I expected the motion to be positive. I expected the motion to be down the incline, and this verifies that I was correct in that guess. And, of course, I want to return the problem as I got it, so I'm going to put it back in the English unit. So 3 point, multiplied by 3.281 feet in a meter, no meters cancel, I will get that A is going to be 5.15 feet per second squared down the incline. So, depend, so why are these answers different? It's because the, the character of the friction is different. Friction's purpose is to, is to oppose motion or the tendency of motion. So you have a different physics problem each and every time you do it. All right. So I want to do one more thing, and I, it's an extremely interesting problem, and then we'll, we'll call it quits on the chapter uh, four. All right. So I'm done with the, the tough problems. I want to do one that's kind of a fun and interesting problem, and that's called the elevator problem. All right, and so, you know, one always says never weigh yourself in an elevator. So, if, you know, if you stand on a spring scale, and this is an elevator, this is officially the elevator problem. Now, first of all, let's not, let's not think about the elevator yet. If you stand on a spring scale and you weigh yourself, you know, you want to go weigh yourself on a scale, right? What are you, what is the scale actually giving you? The spring scale really does not give you your weight. It gives you the normal force. So the spring, the spring, the spring scale gives you the normal force of basically of the, of the, of the scale pushing back on you. So we always know, I mean, it turns out that the normal force in this particular case is mg, so it really is giving you your weight. But if you really want to be uh, exact about it, the spring scale is actually giving you a reading, which is your normal force. Now here's the situation. What if you're inside of an elevator? What happens then? What, what does your spring scale tell you now? All right. And so let's imagine in part A, we're going to assume that the elevator is actually accelerating upwards. So you're in an elevator. And you're on the spring scale. Okay. Now, let's assume that the, the elevator is now accelerating up. Elevator is accelerating up. Now, you always will have a normal force going up. And your weight will be going down. All right. So, your weight's M. Your, your weight's always going to be going down. So, the, the question is... Well, let's assume that let's say your let's say for instance that your mass let's say your big male whatever your mass is seventy five kilograms, and let's say that the acceleration 
uh, is going to be, um, uh, we'll, we'll just say it's 1.2 meters per second squared. For the elevator's not that fast. We'll tell the elevator it's going up at 1.20 meters per second squared. Now, what will your what will your weight actually read in this case? What well, what will the spring scale say? Well, let's see here. Let's let's do Newton's, sec, Newton's second law in the y direction. So we apply Newton's second law in the y direction. Again, the, the elevator is accelerating upward. You're on an elevator. You're you're trying to weigh yourself on the elevator, and it's accelerating upward. So what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be again. you well, we're going to say that your positive y direction is up. Some of our forces, you have normal forces always up and weight is always down. And this time though, your, your gravity, your acceleration is up, MA, positive. And so what you'd actually get is that you'd have the normal force putting MG on your side, you get MG plus MA, or your normal force is M has upon G plus A. You actually would see a reading that's actually higher. You'd actually be looking like you weigh more than you really do. All right. And so in this case, in this case, your, your normal force would be what? You're 75 kilograms. G is 9.80 meters per second squared. And I just told you that you're, it's, it's going up 1.2 meters per second squared. The elevator is you would find out that your normal force would read as 825 newtons. That's what your spring scale would tell you. That your spring scale would read 825 newtons because you're in an elevator that's accelerating at 1.2 meters per second squared. Essentially, you're more or less in a, on a planet that has a larger acceleration of gravity, effectively. Okay? And so what happens, though, if you happen to be going up at a constant velocity. So now that's part A. Part A means you're going up in an acceleration that's upward. What happens though if, if, you, if your elevator is actually going up at a constant velocity? All right, so now we're gonna say that V is constant. If the velocity is constant, what do we know about a constant velocity? Well, acceleration, is a change in the velocity with respect to time. It means your acceleration now is zero. It means the elevator is not accelerating. It's zero. Now what happens? Well, sum of all forces in the y direction is, again, always the sum of the forces. So it's going to be normal force up minus mg down. But this time, you have no acceleration. So your right-hand side of your equation is zero. That means your normal force is equal to your weight. That's exactly as if you're in a stationary situation, what you would believe the spring scale would tell you. So how much do you really weigh? Well, 75 kilograms times 9.80 meters per second squared. The normal force then tells you that you're, you really weigh 735 newtons, not the 825 newtons that your previously that your scale previously told you. Right? This is the most interesting part of all. What if your elevator is actually going down? What if it's what if it's accelerating downward? Now what happens? So, and this is this is a very very interesting application. Let's now say your accelerate your acceleration is downward. And so we'll kind of look at the previous problem, but this time we're gonna look at the acceleration being negative. So now the acceleration is gonna be negative 1.20 meters per second squared. Negative meaning down. Now what does Newton's second law look like? Sum of all forces in the y direction, again, is normal force up minus weight down is negative ma. Now you have a downward inertial force. Right-hand side of Newton's second law is always called an inertial force. I don't know if I made a point of that, but it's inertial force. It is not a norm, it's not your regular forces. It's actually a force that's equal to MA. And MA is particular, it is a force, but it's, it's, it's called inertial force because it deals with the kinematics. 
Now what happens? I'm going to add mg to both sides. Now what do I get? I have normal force is mg minus ma, or the normal force is m times the quantity g minus a. Hmm. Normal force is 75 kilograms. Now it's 9.80 meters per second squared minus 1.20 meters per second squared. I now will be told that I weigh less than what I really weigh. Now the normal force will be 645 newtons. So my scale will now read at 645 newtons. Now what happens though? What happens if the acceleration is so much that it actually is the gravitational acceleration? What if, what if A equals G? That means that you would be weightless in the elevator. That means that literally, if you're in that elevator that's accelerating down at G, you would be weightless. And in fact, NASA actually has a special airplane that where it does exactly this. It actually will cause, it'll actually accelerate downward in 9.8 meters second square, and it puts the astronauts in a state of weightlessness. So the astronauts are floating around as if they're in outer space. In fact, there's a really cool thing. If you guys remember Stephen Hawking, Stephen Hawking uh, was a great cosmologist. He was confined in a wheelchair since since he was in graduate school with the you know the um, the um, uh, what do you call it? ALS disease, right? And so you know he was, uh, Stephen Hawking is a really popular guy. So NASA astronauts decided they're going to do they're going to do a cool little thing for him. So they they put him so they had this they put you know they they put him on this they they went with them on this special airplane that did a downward acceleration. And they basically he was weightless. They took him out of his wheelchair and he was able to float around. They they had played around with him. They spun him around and they and he had a great old time. He, he called he said he said that was one of the most that was the most uh, one of the funnest experiences of his life is to be on that on an airplane. So there, he he was he was not encumbered by weight at all. So he was able to you know he was able to do some really cool stuff. And so but anyway, that's just uh you know that's a situation where if you're in an elevator where you are literally accelerating at a at G downward, you literally will be weightless, all right? And so with that, I've, I'm going to call it a close on chapter four. So, all right, well, thank you very much.